Like a mat, late night, and it's like I missed it. Welcome back to my YTV video, man. Today, I know y'all thought I was dead, man. Seven and a half weeks. About two months since I've been on the channel, man. And uh, we made it. I didn't die. I'm here with a special guest today. Yo. My boy Green. My name is Jordan Green. And, uh, you know, I'm going to pop his Instagram up. Make sure y'all follow him, man. But we're about to get right into the needy greedy, man, of Air Force BMT, the truth of what happened. We'll be showing. Uh, I'm going to be telling you my experience, the whole thing. Uh, we're going to get some tips out. And then, uh... Just gonna give you a little bit of a rundown what happened. And uh, yeah, man, so we're just gonna cut to the chase. I'm not gonna make this video too long. Uh, and at the end, we're gonna see, you know, what kind of videos you wanna see in the future. And uh, so yeah, let's get right into it. Let's get it! All right, man, so first off, we're gonna start with um, when we first got to BMT, man. Now, this is where shit gets real, man. So they're gonna bring you on a the bus. They're gonna bring you on a bus. You're gonna go to the PRC. If you don't know what the PRC is, you're gonna find out soon if you're watching this video. It's a big building. That's where you first gotta go, man. They got you know they got on the bus, you know. Everybody, you know, cool, relax. Y'all get off the bus. Nothing too crazy. You know, I get off the bus, I think that everything's gonna be a breeze, man. So we're there for like the whole day, really. Um how was y'all's first experience when we first got to the PRC, man? Honestly, I thought so you know the you know the so what's gonna happen is, is that People are gonna do be doing like details. You'll find out what details is when you you know when you go through the project. Yeah, right. But so people that are doing details, they bring us MREs and stuff. They sit us down and like I'm thinking, damn, like these better be the MTIs and stuff. So I'm like, yeah, this is chill. Like people people are saying that the Air Force is a chair force. So I'm like, I'm dead ass thinking like that's what it is. Yeah. And uh, when, once you get there, bro, it's it's gonna be like real relaxed. Real relaxed, too relaxed, where you just like, this can't be right, but it might be right. Because you don't know. You yeah, don't know, what, know. What, you, what to expect. And so you're going to get all your uh, equipment. They're going to give you a big bag and stuff with everything in it. You're just going to be really sitting and waiting there the whole time. And um, what about you? How was it for you? When you so, I mean, I got there pretty late. I got there at like 10.30 p.m. So I, I was like, oh, shit's going to be fast, like quick, yeah. quick. And I get there and everyone's just like chilling. And I was like, oh, this ain't bad. I was expecting to like meet your MTIs, like start getting handled like right away. And we just stood there for like two hours and nothing happened. And um, and, and then I'm sure you'll touch on we then then then, 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 the, then the fun, fun starts, part, man. So <laughs> we we gonna get into that right now. So basically the whole day you just waiting and you know getting some paperwork. Not really, not a lot of paperwork. They're just getting you ready and like prep to you know go to where you're actually going. Now for any Air Force members or anybody that's in the Air Force right now, tech school, whatever. You know what Disneyland and Alcatraz is, or if you don't know, you'll find out <laughs> soon, bro. And so, really, Disneyland um, are gonna be the nice, the nice um, dorms that you know trainees will be in, and uh, that's right behind the PRC building where we get dropped off the first time. And you know, me thinking like, okay, we're here, uh, we're gonna stay here because this is a nice building. We're gonna live in the nice dorms. That ain't it, man. So uh, they round us up. They tell us to get to the door. And then uh, we go on a bus. Now, our new things are all because we don't need a bus to go right behind the building where all the new dorms are at. So, um, this is where the fun part is, man. So, we get on the bus. We take, like, what, like a two-minute two minute drive at max yeah, two minutes. Yeah. It's late. two minutes of my life. For me, it was late. So, like, it was underneath the, the, the pads. It was, like, yellow lighting. Like, it's an old building. Old building. And you just see the shadows of the MTIs. And the MTIs are gonna be waiting for you out there, man. You just pull up and you're just like looking like, uh, this is about to get real. So basically, we pull up, right? Another MTI, a real MTI with the MTI brim gets on the bus. And uh, that's when BMT starts, man. It, it started yelling at us. I, I had to run off the bus. I was just I just remember everything so vividly happened so fast. It, it was just crazy. I had to drop my stuff, pick it up like 10 times. And then, yeah, what about y'all? What y'all think? Y'all heard so, you know. Obviously, we were on the bus. I don't know about you, but I came at like, what time was it? Like 11, 12? Yeah, it was late. Like, it was late as fuck. We didn't get on a bus until like, to go to Alcatraz until two-ish in the morning. And so, you know, we go in this shit and we get off the bus. Well, we don't get off the bus first. First, the NTIs get on the bus, like you said, and Everything's chill. They start going through everything. They start briefing us a little bit and telling us what happened. 
And then my MTI, he counted down to five seconds. And then he just started yelling at everybody to get off the bus. And that's when just everything just sets in for you. Yeah. It's like, damn, like, I'm actually here. Yeah, I think I think when I first got there, it was like 8 o'clock. I don't remember this. Uh, it was like 8 o'clock. So all the MTIs that were freshly there, like, every single MTI was there when I got there. Because we were the first group to arrive there. And then I remember we stayed up that night till like 12 o'clock because we didn't want to go to sleep because we didn't know when the MTIs were coming our room. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, I was pretty trash. So if you get there at nine o'clock at 2100 military time, you can go to sleep, bro. Don't stay up like I did. You can go to sleep, all right? Go to sleep. Especially but, um, if you, especially if you're like the second group to come in, do not stay up past three o'clock because you have to get up exactly 5:45 the next morning. I legit got like an hour and a half of sleep because we were not told to go to bed, so we were just like, oh. We just gotta sit here all night. And then we eventually fell asleep and got like an hour and a half of sleep and the next day was hell. Yeah, bro. But we're gonna get more into depth than that in, uh, in another video. So basically what we're gonna touch on next is how to deal with stress at BMT. A lot of people before going to or joining the military don't really have, well, I'm not gonna say everybody, but most people don't have experience getting yelled at all the time consistently. Maybe athletes or people that grew up with really strict parents. Maybe y'all could, 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 could vouch for, you know, always getting yelled at, whatever, boom. But these MTRs are gonna yell at you. If you think you're gonna come in and not get yelled at, you're wrong. Cause you're gonna get yelled at. Me, I thought I was not gonna get yelled at. I was gonna just do everything I could to not get yelled at. And I got yelled at like probably the first day I was there. Cause you know, everybody's just gonna get yelled at. So just be prepared to be yelled at for a good while. Till you're like, what? Even till like our last week, we were getting yelled at still. Yeah. So you're gonna get yelled at. So how, how would y'all say like dealing with like the stress and like, getting yelled at with like. I feel yeah. like you should mentally prepare yourself because even though people say, like like I said, people call it a chair force, but even though it's that, it might be a little bit easier. Well, for me it was easy, but for everybody else, they still would deal with mental stresses. You need to mentally prepare yourself for just being yelled at constantly. And just because you get yelled at doesn't mean that you're absolutely like just messing up everything. They yell at you the first few weeks to put you in a, in a mindset where, okay, like I need to get this done, I need to be, What's they, what, what, what they call it? Um, how they do everything fast and time? Um, I don't know what he's talking about, bro. <laughs> but no, but no, he's right though. They're gonna yell at you, bro. But it's not one thing you gotta remember. Just don't, don't listen to how they're saying, but listen to what they're saying, man. That's right. the biggest thing you could do. Don't just their, their job is to yell at you and make sure that when you mess up, they're gonna correct you. And the way they correct you is by yelling at you all the time. So. That's, that's that, man. So you're gonna get yelled at, and then basically with stress all the time, um, with your PCs, what a PC is, is things you have to do to graduate. Those are very stressful, but it's all just comes down to being prepared and preparing yourself for those those PC checks. How did y'all like prepare for those men, like those PCs and stuff? A little bit home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my thing was is like, obviously they're, they're there to be strict and stuff, but they want you to graduate. Like their job is to turn you into airmen. So they're not there to like make you fail, recycle, like kick you back. So like you, you gotta put the effort in and they will fail you, but at the same time, they're, they're there to help you. So I don't know, like you just have to find a balance between that of being, like obviously I was nervous. I was kind of, I was very nervous, for, especially like folding your clothes and all that crap. I was very nervous for that. But you have to remember, it's their job to do what they do. It's like nothing, nothing personal to them. It's it's just their job. Right. So you have to remember that, and then remember that they want you to succeed just as much as you want you to succeed. So all right. So um, move on from that. Oh, uh, and, and we're gonna get more into depth of these like these topics in later videos. But we're just gonna do an overall brief, man. So um. Uh, one another thing too is try not to laugh, man. BMT is gonna be the funniest, <laughs> funniest place. How do I put it? How, how it's, it? The, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's like a comedy show. You're not supposed to laugh. Yeah, at. yeah exactly, bro. Like, there's so many times where I, I just, I, there's times that even that lunch when all the MTRs are there and then like I had to leave early. I still had like a PB and J sandwich I had to eat and stuff, and I had to leave the table because I was about to laugh. So, uh, it, it's like one of the toughest places not to laugh at, so you don't get yelled at. I got yelled at once for smiling. Um, hey, did y'all get yelled at? By the no, I got yelled at the second we got off the bus for smiling. Yeah, so, yeah, it's like, like you said, a comedy show you can't laugh at, bro. All right, so getting, getting into the more serious note, um, before you join, or before you get to BMT, man, you gotta just really mentally prepare yourself to change your bad habits. 
Um, BMT is, uh, what, especially because you don't have your phone. Most of the time, there's only three times you're gonna have your phone at BMT, bro. Three times. So you gotta really take this opportunity to change your bad habits and say you always wake up late or you're late on time. They're gonna make sure you're on time no matter where you're going. If not, then you're not gonna punish, they're not gonna punish you, but they're gonna punish everybody in your flight. And y'all gonna learn what um, like all the terminology we're using, flight, squadrons, all that stuff. Like you're gonna know what we're talking about. Um, you're gonna be in BMT like, oh, so that's what they meant by this. Yes, that's what we mean. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a chance to change bad habits. Like, was there any bad habits that y'all like kind of like improved on when you, after BMT? So my my biggest thing when I was back in my hometown, I always thought about myself. I always thought about my me succeeding and just personal growth. But when you come to BNT, you have to think for the team. That's the biggest thing. If you if you mess up, everybody messes up. If you do something down, everybody's gonna suffer the consequences. What about you? Yeah, I'm kind of going off that. Like my thing is, I would know. Like, at first, I wasn't really moving quick, and you have to move quick. So some people have more difficulty than others. Like I wouldn't say I had too much trouble. So that way, if like once I start to kind of grasp the teamwork part. You want, I would move really quick. That way, if somebody else is struggling, I would have extra time to help them. So just going back to that teamwork, that's yeah, a really bro. big thing. So one one big thing, bro. If you're gonna go in the BMT thing, like you're just gonna be solo, doing your own thing, and like not get in trouble, do what you have to get done, and then dip. That's not gonna be the case. I was trying to be like that for the first couple like days, weeks, but it, it just it doesn't work, bro. Like no matter how hard you try, it doesn't work. Cause at the end of the day, you have to be a team player, and it's only gonna benefit you in the end and also everybody like in your dorm and your flight like just being outside of yourself and helping everybody um it's gonna make your time go by way faster and it's gonna be way easier on you if you just you know just shut your mouth and do your work and go beyond you know the expectations they have for you and it's gonna make your time go by you know way easier and then um what to expect what to expect during bmt um what what do y'all what do y'all what are some tips you guys say if you can give them any tips? Expect like the unexpected. <laughs> Things change all the time, and yes. that's one thing that the military will teach you is like you gotta be prepared for whatever because like it, it'll change like that. I think also that you should also take into consideration people are not from the same place as you, so you just gotta keep that in mind. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you do. Especially, please. Please do not touch nobody. Oh, don't touch nobody. Do not touch Don't touch nobody. Do not touch, nobody. Do not touch anybody. Because it's a really big problem. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're going to get in, uh, more into depth with all these topics in another another video. If y'all want me to do a full breakdown of the weeks, um, there's other, there, like, most of y'all that are watching this are about to go to join the Air Force or ship off to BMT, or you're just watching just for educational purposes. If y'all want me to go into depth about each week, uh, we can do that and then just like let y'all know some game about what to do, what not to do, man. Because it's stuff you should should not do at all. <laughs> and there's stuff that you know you should be doing, man. Um, but that's basically it. Uh, y'all killed it on the last video, man. That's probably my most watched video. We're gonna keep uh, putting out these videos weekly. Um, I'm in tech school right now, so I'm gonna be trying to get as much video and content in for y'all as I can. And uh, so shout out to my boy. Uh, Mr. Green and Mr. Sherlock Holmes. I'm gonna pop their Instagrams up <laughs> right here. Boom, boom. And then, uh, yeah, man, we are out. I'm gonna see y'all in the next video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And we out. Peace. Ah. And we have another special guest. Gaskins. Gaskins, the legend. <laughs>